some exposure to a cult, either in an airport or at a campus situation like here at UWM. This is Margie Laughlin, and Margie, you were in the Moonies for a while. What was your first contact like? Well, they had approached me while on the University of Wisconsin campus in Madison, and they were very friendly, and they, they kept contacts up. They were always trying to call me and what they call love bomb me, send me little letters and things like that, and they just... They gained my trust as, as friends, and then they started slowly indoctrinating me through that. How long were you with the Moonies? I was with them for three months. And how did you get out? My parents rescued me um, off of the Iowa City campus, and I was deprogrammed. Just what is it that makes the Moonies so attractive to young people all over the country? Well, let's find out with PM Magazine's Lauren Dixon. The nausea was gone, the fear was gone, the guilt was gone. And I knew that I was a free man, and that there were no ties on me. And I went outside and began running through the pastures and through the cornfields and jumping into the air and clicking my heels and screaming at the top of my lungs, I'm free. What Steve Kemperman found freedom from was nearly four years in the controversial Unification Church. His life was devoted to the Reverend Sun Yun Moon, who he believed was the Messiah. He worked 16 to 20 hours a day, seven days a week, uh, snow, sleet, rain. I made about $120,000, tax-free dollars. It was very dull, very hopeless. I had no future. Um, when I looked into the future, it was black. There are an estimated 5,000 cults in the United States. Steve joined the largest and most powerful cult in the country, the Moonies. He was kidnapped and deprogrammed twice before he was able to take charge of his life again. Steve just wrote a book about what he calls his incredible four-year nightmare and is touring the nation telling teenagers of his bizarre experiences. Now, if someone in my high school had sponsored a cult seminar, I would not be standing here right now talking about my three and a half years in one of the most pernicious and destructive cults this country has ever seen. He shares a story about a very normal, middle-class, hopeful, ambitious young man who has definite goals and dreams of making our world a better place. So when Steve went off to college at Berkeley, it was time to explore. What I met in, in Sproul Plaza in 73 was so different from what I got involved in, finally, in the Unification Church. What Steve met was an idealistic young group called the New Education Development, devoted to building a whole new community, a whole new way of life. Steve says what he really met was a front group for the Unification Church, with no mention of any religious affiliation. The process of recruiting began with what the cult calls love bombing. Where they're just showering you with uh, affection and support, and hey, that's great, you play the guitar, and wow, you're, that's a wonderful, intelligent question, you're so intelligent. And it's, it's done in a very natural way, so it's, it's very convincing. Plus the lying. That Steve says the love bombing session was the hook, and the sinker was the intense workshop of brainwashing. Once they get you to the workshop, they have you. Three solid days. And that's where they start working on your mind. And these workshops are incredible. They are sophisticated uh, play, uh, sessions where they are actually manipulating human thinking. Every hour of the day was planned, everything from 15 hours of lecture to one-on-one -on -one sessions to hoot nannies and stomp downs. Not one minute alone to examine the experience. There is an experience of overload that the mind is subjected to. Information overload, stress overload, and the mind can't handle it and just snaps into an altered state. It was then when Steve says a whole new belief structure was planted. He began writing to his new true parents and studying the teachings of the divine principle, Sun Yun Moon's Bible. It was at that point Dr. David Boone, one of Steve's programmers, says Steve became a robot. Every answer had been programmed into him. Um, they came out very mechanically, uh, in a monotonous way. There was no emotion in his voice, there was no emotion in his features and his eyes were empty. There was uh, uh, this in incredible feeling that he could not be reached no matter what we tried. For Steve's mother and father, the ordeal was devastating. Well, he'd always been some uh, a boy who liked to have fun and he was adventuresome and he had a lot of energy and all of a sudden he had given up everything in his life. In, in some sense he was too nice and too goody. He wanted to please everybody and uh, 
uh, he uh, lost all his previous interests and was just uh, smooth and smiling. Steve's real concern was to please the Reverend Sun Yun Moon by raising as much money for him as he could. Moonies believe that through the process of indemnity of suffering and, and, and trials, they will spiritually perfect themselves. So they are profiting from their own suffering. But after a while, it became um, very, very uh, dull. It was a drudgery. Uh, getting up in the morning, there were so many times I, I wished I was dead. Still, somehow Steve could not leave the cult, but his parents were determined to save their son, and finally, after months and months of searching, they located him in Ohio. Kidnapping was the only way out. So I got impatient, and I said, I'm going to do this myself, and I went out, and I bought a black wig and some dark glasses, and I went off to Cleveland. Uh, somebody yelled, let's do it and heave ho and they pushed him into the back of the van and the door closed and the car screeched away days of deprogramming ensued and months and months of counseling followed at times i have flashbacks and sense little um, experiences of sudden fear just very fleeting i came so close to going back um, to the group and if I had gone back, my entire life would have been, I think, in a very real way, wasted. What has it meant to have your child back, to have your son back? Is it, no, it's like getting a baby. Uh, well, he can go off into Alaska. It doesn't matter, but he, he is himself. He's his own person again. Today, Steve is crossing the country, sharing his story with young people, and he leaves them with one final thought. You're all free. You all have an opportunity to determine your own lives, determine your own uh, fate. And that's a very beautiful privilege, a very beautiful right. And please never give that up to another man, to another group. Thank you very much. Margie Laughlin has read Steve's book, The Coming of the Second Advent. What did you think about the book? Well, the book was very accurate, and unfortunately, it was all truthful. We're going to talk more about Margie's rescue and where you can find help if you need it when PM Magazine continues. We're back with Margie Laughlin. Now, Margie, you were in the Moonies for three months. Yes. Now, how tough was it to get away? Uh, well, it was so tough that my parents had to come and rescue me because uh, I wouldn't have left on my own. Well, how did they do that? How did they get you out away from the cult? Don't you have you guards and uh, people watching over you? Well, sure. Um, when I was on the Iowa City campus, they, uh, they stopped and they pulled up and they threw me in the car and took me to a, a house where I was deprogrammed. Now, they say that some Moonies have flashbacks. Do you ever have these? Sure. Sometimes, no. Like, if I'm alone at night or something and I'm thinking about things, you know, a lot of things that happen to me in the cult, uh, a lot of the friends that I met in the cult will come back to me and um, I'll have a desire to want to run back there. So I just have to sit back and analyze what really happened and what made me get that flashback. And then I can look at it that way and realize how crazy the whole thing was. Thanks for sharing your story with uh, us. We, we really appreciate it. Luck and keep strong. Yeah. <laughs> That's where it is. We're really good. If you need more information on cults or on anything that has to do with cults, just write the citizens.